Okay, uh, as most of you know, I have been complaining a lot about the weather recently. It's been a very long and grueling uh, winter that has gone uh, a few weeks longer than usual. I've been complaining about it on Twitter and so forth, and uh, just a few days ago I wrote, For over a month now, spring has teased us, teased us with hints of her arrival, only to withdraw back into winter like a coy mistress, obscure object of our desire. Tomorrow the so-called Kanno Modori, so the return of the cold, uh, it came that next day and it lasted for another few weeks. And finally, after a very long, prolonged Kanno Modori, the winter is finally ended and yesterday we had a very uh, beautiful spring day and we're finally in spring. And I wrote a little uh, poem expressing my frustration. For over a month now, spring has teased us with hints of her arrival only to withdraw back into winter like a coy mistress, obscure object of our desire. Tomorrow the so-called Kan no Modori, return of the cold. Not sure how much more I can take. So I originally posted that as a, as a regular tweet, but then I thought it might make a good poem, so I turned it into a poem. Uh, but at any rate, the spring is uh, now finally here. Koi Mistress, obscure object of our desire, is finally here. And we are now in uh, spring. So um, I thought I would read a little excerpt from my translation of the uh, great scholar of uh, classical Japanese literature, Nakanishi Susuma. He wrote several uh, books which I combined into a single English translation called The Japanese Linguistic Landscape, and it goes over and discusses uh, some of the most important and, and some obs rather obscure uh, ideas and concepts and uh, terminologies from classical Japanese literature. And one of the entries is in the spring section of the book, uh, and the word is udana, or uh, sounds kind of like ulala in uh, English, and kind of has the same connotations, ulala, kind of return of uh, spring. And udara is, uh, I translate it as bright, beautiful spring weather. It has several meanings, which uh, he discusses in his entry, which I will read right now. And I'll put the description to the book in the, or I'll put the link to uh, the book purchase in the description below, so you can buy it. It's an excellent book. Uh, it's about 430 pages, no, 300 and some odd pages in total, with some lovely pictures included, taken by his wife. All right. Uh, Urara, Urara, bright, beautiful spring weather. Urara expresses the easygoing, laid-back feeling of spring weather, the feel of spring weather. This mood is conveyed in the popular song, Haru no Urara no Sumidagawa, uh, which I translate as bright, beautiful spring has come over the Sumida River. Of course, the Sumida River in Tokyo, in the Shitamachi region of Tokyo. In Chinese characters, the most common rendering of Urara is the character Dei, the uh, Dei of Kide, for example, or Deijin, uh, which means beautiful or bright. We also sometimes find Urara written with the character uh, Chi, or Okureru, uh, to be late or to be slow, or to be gentle are the three meanings of that character, chi, uh, as in the well-known expression shunjitsu urada, or haru no hi osoredu osoredu, okureru okure okure, or shunjitsu urada is the reading of that. I'll put those in the description so you can see what kanji characters I'm referring to, which means a slow-moving, serene spring day. Yet if you consider the meaning of urara as a native Japanese word, without the uh, Chinese uh, sinographs, rather than in terms of Chinese characters, you find that neither dei, beautiful, nor chi, gentle, are entirely appropriate. Urara is a shortened form of uda uda. Okay, so originally it uh, is, comes from these, this word uda and uh, repeated twice, uda uda. This means that the uda component from, forms the word's core. If you gather up all the closely related terms, however, you find among them various moisture-related expressions that begin with uru. Okay, so ura is related to uru, the uru of uruoi and so forth, uh, the root form of ura. So uh, ura comes from, originally comes from uru, uh, such as the uruoi ga aru, which means wet with moisture, and eyes wet with tears, me mo urumu, is another uh, common expression in uh, contemporary Japanese as well, uruma, to, to become moist or wet with uh, moisture. It is also common in conversational speech to hear someone say that they are sad that even their heart is wet with tears. Kokoromo ururu, uh, uru uru. Kokoromo uru uru. Even my heart is wet with tears. 
It follows then that we can only call something udada when it has an abundance of moisture permeating it. Okay, so immediately udada, its original connotation, is, uh, has to do with uh, moisture. I suppose that's why we most often hear the word udada in spring, the time of year when the air is full of moisture. At the same time, we also use udara in the autumn, in the aki. So we say aki udara, uh, as we often say, which means a clear autumn air, aki udara, to capture the fresh, brisk quality of the autumn air. In short, udara expresses two totally different things depending on whether it is modifying spring or autumn. Okay, so udara, the meaning of udara, uh, depends on which of these two seasons it is referring to. When it modifies spring, it connotes moisture and brightness. When it modifies autumn, it means refreshing and delightful. The famous line from the Kojiki. Okay, the Kojiki, of course, uh, you all know the Kojiki, one of the early first uh, written texts of Japanese language attributed to Yamato Takeru no Mikoto. Uh, the famous line from that work, probably the most famous line from that work, is how beautiful is Yamato. Yamato shi uruwashi is another expression that clearly evokes the natural climate of the Yamato region when it is glen when the region when the entire region is gently shrouded in that unmistakable soft spring haze. Okay, so here Yamato shi uruwashi is specifically a spring uh, modifier. Even though today we may use the Chinese characters day bright beautiful the the day of kire for the native Japanese word uruwashi. So usually uruwashi is still written, is, usually it's written with this character day. I'd still like it to be a word that evokes a beauty that is overflowing with such gentle feelings and associations, not limited to this uh, Chinese character day, which specifically uh, denotes beauty and brightness. It follows then that a person who is regarded as, and doesn't have that moisture association, is, essentially. So day lacks that moisture association that the word urda and udu and udu udu and udu uda uda originally had. It follows then that a person who is regarded as a reijing, uh, kirei na hito, reijing, like beijing, or beautiful person, is not simply someone with well-defined facial features. Rather, a true reijing must also possess a certain, a certain moisture, a kind of supple freshness that complements their outward beauty. Similarly, the word utsukushi, which is the normal, uh, the default, the standard word for beautiful, did not originally denote physical beauty alone. It also con connoted a sweet-natured, adorable, and lovely nature, or uh, personality. Like Beijing, utsukushi requires a certain gentleness of manner in addition to the, de to the element of physical beauty. So a certain gentleness of manner is also a requisite of Utsukushi, as it is with Beijing. Clearly, Japanese conceptions of beauty have always been linked to human sentiment and matters of the heart. Okay, so that's one of the major themes that, that runs throughout this book, that these uh, the Japanese words uh, convey two things simultaneously, the sort of objective uh, attributes and characteristics of a thing, and also the subjective responses to that thing, kind of synthesized or fused into a single idea, which the word then uh, expresses. Alright, that's all for uh, this entry of Udara in this excellent book that I highly recommend. I do not get any of the proceeds, but um, uh, I do suggest that you all buy it. I use it in class too, uh, from time to time. That is all for now. Uh, goodbye.